Hey everyone, my name is Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my spoiler free review for Boundary Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. Full disclosure, I am going to be gushing a lot about this book. This follows a girl named Sanchia who lives in a place called Foundry Side where she is hired as a very skilled thief. We start off with the story of her having to pull off this really impressive robbery of an unknown item that ends up being a lot more uh, valuable than she initially believed and ends up helping her uh, discover a lot more of this world and the behind the scenes of this world than she would expect. So that is all I really want to say about the summary for this book. I really want to talk a lot about my thoughts because oh, this was so good. Starting off with the magic system in this world. Oh my god, I love a good hard magic system, you guys, and this did not disappoint. I had heard good things about this magic system, but I didn't really know a lot about it. And wow, I am so impressed. Uh, this is definitely on par with any of Brandon Sanderson's magic systems. I think it is just as innovative, just as well thought out. Uh, the magic system behind this world is a thing called scribing, where essentially certain people know how to interact with an inanimate object and make it change its reality to believe it does something that makes it believe it would be able to do something else outside of its physical rules. So for example, with a, something like a lamp, you could, instead of having it give off light, you could scribe it and make it instead think that it should absorb light. And so the lamp becomes this source of absorbing all the light around it. And only certain people in this world know how to scribe. And there's this very complex system behind scribing, a lot of rules behind uh, what you're allowed to do. So for example, if you're trying to turn a table into a fish, that's going to be a lot harder than turning a table into a chair because changing something into something that's completely outside of its boundaries is almost impossible in this world versus um, doing something more contained with an object is a little bit easier. So there's all these different rules and complexities to this magic system of scribing and it's so fascinating to learn slowly about all these rules throughout this entire book. I loved the magic system in this world. And what's super fun, what, one of my favorite things uh, in fantasy and just one of my favorite tropes is when in, inanimate objects become animate and they have their own personalities that they take on. The book that I think of off the top of my head that does this very well is Warbreaker, where a sword has its own personality, is its own character, and it's done really well. Uh, this book has that throughout the entire book. All of these inanimate objects that have these scribing rules built into them. Our main character, Sanjia, she has the ability to hear these scribings of these inanimate objects and understand what they've been scribed to do. So she's constantly interacting with the world around her and with objects around her and hearing their thoughts. And it is so much fun. There's also an inanimate character in this book, it's a key. Uh, it's not a spoiler or anything like that, um, but it's a key and it takes on its own personality and it is the best part of this entire book. This key is the most sarcastic, wittiest, funniest character <laughs> I have read in a fantasy book in so long. I loved it. So that trope, if you are a huge fan of inanimate objects taking on a personality, oh, is this the book for you? Because the entire book, has this going on. So much fun. That's the magic system and I loved it. The next thing I'm going to talk about is characters. So I kind of alluded to this uh, with the key character, but by far Clef, the key character, is the best. He is so funny, so witty, and then Sanchia, the other main character, is such a great character. She is this thief who has kind of starts off where she's very, very mistrusting 
of the world around her, of the characters around her. Uh, she's been through a lot. She's lived in poverty. She's kind of been alone all her life and she's been experimented on in the past that's made her very, very wary of the world around her. And so as the story progresses and she meets the cast of characters, she becomes more trusting, she becomes more fun, and it's just such a fun character growth to watch. It's a lot like Vin in Mistborn. Uh, it's it's very much where she starts out as kind of the, the street urchin and makes her way up uh, to this pretty powerful magical figure who has this awesome group of people around her and I loved Sanchia and her interactions and her dialogue with all the other characters throughout this whole book is so funny. I was laughing at quite a lot of this book. The dialogue in it is amazing and every character that's introduced with Sanchia and Clef they're all morally ambiguous. You're not sure if they're the good guy, you're not sure if they're the bad guy, but they're all kind of working together to try to stop this pretty bad thing that they all agree is bad. It's it's bad for all of them in different ways. And that's what's another fun thing. Everyone's kind of out for themselves, but they form this bond together knowing that this one thing that they're trying to stop would hurt all of them and that's what makes them the good guys and i love that i love that trope of kind of having this like misfit group of characters that in their own way are all bad but they have to kind of come together to do a good thing and ah oh, it's just so great it's so great i loved it so the characters in this book are so much fun the dialogue in it is so smart snappy, witty. It's great. The action in this book, I have to say, wow, this book hooks you right away from the start. You start off with a bang and with Sanjia trying to pull off this really impressive robbery and she has this huge scene that's so much fun and the action really doesn't stop too much. Uh, we have, you know, a couple breaks in the action uh, where we're, our characters are kind of developing and meeting each other, but throughout this entire book we really have a lot of action-packed scenes and the action in it is so much fun because it's all of that use of scribing and turning these in and inanimate objects uh, into different things that help you and it's just so much fun to follow. So the action in this book is really really fun, very unique. Uh, I loved it. I, I thought the pacing of this novel was excellent. It did not lose my attention at all. In fact, I think that this pacing uh, is definitely on par with a lot of young adult fantasies that I've read. Uh, a lot of the appeal of young adult fantasy for a lot of readers is the pacing and it's just a little bit quicker, uh, more to the point. And I felt like Foundry Side is a book that can definitely appeal to a young adult fantasy audience in a lot of ways. So if you are an older reader who tends to like YA fantasy and wants to get more into adult fantasy. I know the go-to for a lot of people's recommendations is always Brandon Sanderson, but I think Foundry Side also is on par with all of those recommendations. Uh, Foundry Side is an awesome place. If you are looking to get into adult fantasy, I think this is a really good place to start because of how fun the characters are, how quick the pacing is, how unique and fun the magic system is. This just has a lot going for it. And it's not overly complex. The scope of the world for this first book, at least, is pretty contained. So we're really just following these characters in this one city. And you get a lot of hints to kind of history of scribing and how certain things came to be. But you don't go too deep into it so there's not a whole lot of like info dumping where you're reading pages and pages of descriptions and you know all of this world building that's very complex none of that really bogs down this text so it really feels like it gets more to the point very quickly but it still offers those readers who appreciate that um, a little bit of those nuggets of information that keep you very intrigued to find out more in future books. So I know this is going to be a trilogy. I actually went ahead and bought the second book like halfway through this book because I loved it so so much and I was like I know I'm going to love this throughout the entire book. Uh, the characters are what really really sold me from page one on this book and why I loved it so much. I actually ended up giving this five stars. This is one of my favorite fantasy books 
ever. <laughs> uh, I am so excited about Foundry Side. I can't wait to continue on with the series because wow, I am so impressed with Robert Jackson Bennett. He really, it, it felt like a lot of times I was reading a Sanderson novel and that's a huge compliment. And I, I don't know who came first, Robert Jackson Bennett or Brandon Sanderson. So maybe Brandon Sanderson sounds like Robert Jackson Bennett. I don't know. But I really, really loved Foundry Side. So if you are a fan of Brandon Sanderson or young adult fantasy, you want to get into adult fantasy, highly, highly recommend. If you like hard magic systems, if you like funny characters and just fun, unique world building, oh, this is totally for you. So that me. is my spoiler free review of Foundry Side. I would love to know who else has read this out there. What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys about books, especially books that I freaking love like this one. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you decide whether or not you want to pick up Foundry Side. I hope you do. Let me know if you do. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until next time.